Please join me in the call to worship. On this day of remembrance, we lift the cup of salvation, give thanks to the Holy One for the bread of life. Jesus calls us to this feast. We come ready to join his disciples at the table of grace. Jesus calls us to join him in love and service. We come ready to share his grief and anguish. Jesus shows us how to love one another. We come ready to worship the God who calls us. Please join me in the prayer of invocation found printed in your bulletin. God of love, during this Holy Week, we give thanks for this night Jesus shared with disciples. Though even now we struggle to understand, we long to follow his example, to serve as he served, to love as he loved. Jesus promised that if we know these things and do them, we will be blessed. Help us then to know and to do all that Jesus taught. Though we will betray and deny, we still come seeking a blessing. For this much we do know, we cannot live fully without your blessing. Amen. Please join me in the United Church of Christ Statement of Faith. We believe in you, O God, eternal spirit, God of our Savior, Jesus Christ, and our God. And to your deeds we testify. You call the worlds into being, create persons in your own image, and set before each one the ways of life and death. You seek in holy love to save all people from aimlessness and sin. You judge people and nations by your righteous will, declared through the prophets and the apostles. In Jesus Christ, the man of Nazareth, our crucified and risen Savior, you have come to us and shared our common lot, conquering sin and death and reconciling the world to yourself. You bestow on us your Holy Spirit, creating and renewing the Church of Jesus Christ, binding in covenant faithful people of all ages, tongues, and races. You call us into your Church to accept the cost and joy of discipleship, to be your servants in the service of others, to proclaim the gospel to all the world and resist the powers of evil, to share in Christ's baptism and eat at his table, to join him in his passion and victory. 
you promise to all who trust you forgiveness of sins and fullness of grace, courage in the struggle for justice and peace, your presence in trial and rejoicing, and eternal life in your realm which has no end. Blessing and honor, glory and power be unto you. Amen. The scripture reading for this evening's service comes from the Gospel according to St. John, chapter 13, verses 1 through 17 and 31 through 35. Now before the festival of the Passover, Jesus knew that his hour had come to depart from this world and go to the Father. Having loved his own who were in the world, he loved them to the end. The devil had already put into the heart, his heart the, of Judas, son of Simon Iscariot, to betray him. And during supper, Jesus, knowing that the Father had given all things into his hand, and that he had come from God and was going to God, got up from the table, took off his outer robe, and tied a towel around himself. Then he poured water into a basin and began to wash the disciples' feet and to wipe them with the towel. He came to Simon Peter, who said to him, Lord, are you going to wash my feet? And Jesus answered, You do not know now what I am doing, but later you will understand. And Peter said to him, You will never wash my feet. And Jesus answered, Unless I wash you, you have no share with me. Simon Peter said to him, Lord, not my feet only, but also my hands and my head. And Jesus said to him, One who has bathed does not need to wash, except for the feet, but is entirely clean. And you are clean, though not all of you. For he knew who was to betray him. And for this he reason he said, Not all of you are clean. After he had washed their feet, he put on his robe and returned to the table and said to them, Do you know what I have done to you? You call me teacher and Lord, and you are right, for that is what I am. So if I, your Lord and teacher, have washed your feet, you also ought to wash one another's feet. For I have set you an example that you, you also should do as I have done to you. Very truly I tell you, servants are not greater than their master, nor are messengers greater than the one who sent them. If you know these things, you are blessed if you do them. When he had gone out, Jesus said, Now the Son of Man has been glorified, and God has been glorified in him. If God has been glorified in him, God will also glorify him in himself, and will glorify him at once. Little children, I am with you only a little longer. You will look for me. And as I said to the Jews, so now I say to you, where I am going, you cannot come. And I give you a new commandment, that you love one another. Just as I have loved you, you also should love one another. By this, everyone will know that you are my disciples, if you have love for one another. Here ends the reading from God's holy word.
come to this sacred table to embrace the sacrifice of Jesus Christ. Come to the table all who desire to experience Jesus more fully. Come to this table not because you must, but because you may. Come, for all things are ready. We remember on the night of betrayal, Jesus took bread at dinner with the disciples. And after he had given thanks, he said, take this and eat. This is my body broken for you. Ministering to you in his name, I give you this bread. Likewise, when the meal had finished, he took the cup and he said, take this and drink, all of you. This is my blood poured out for you and for many in the covenant of the forgiveness of sins. As often as you take this bread and drink this cup, do this in remembrance of me. Ministering to you in his name, I give you this cup. Please pray with me. Most holy God, on this sacred night of sacred nights, we give you thanks that even in your agony, you shared yourself with the disciples and with us. Fill us with your grace as we struggle to understand these meanings. In your holy name we pray. Amen. We give thanks to you, almighty God, that we have been refreshed with this memorial of your love. Help us to experience the presence of Christ today and every day and increase our love for each other in his sacred name. Amen.
The Office of Tenebrae dates back to the early fourth century. The gradual extinguishing of the light is symbolic of the flight of the disciples, the dark hate of Jesus' enemies, and the death of Jesus on the cross. The moment of total darkness symbolizes the days Jesus was in the tomb. The relighting of the candle, single central candle, is the prophecy of Easter. Jesus was troubled in spirit and declared, Very truly, I tell you, one of you will betray me. The disciples looked at one another, uncertain to whom he was speaking. One of his disciples, one whom Jesus loved, was reclining next to him. Simon Peter therefore motioned to him to ask Jesus to whom he was speaking. So while reclining next to Jesus, he asked him, Lord, who is it? Jesus answered, It is the one who I will give this piece of bread when I have dipped it in the dish. So when it was dipped in the piece of bread, he gave it to Judas, son of Simon, Iscariot. After he received the piece of bread, Satan entered into him. Jesus said to him, Do quickly what you are going to do. Now no one at the table knew why he said this to him. Some thought that because Judas had become the common purse, Jesus was telling him, Buy what you need for the festival, or that he should give something to the poor. So after receiving the piece of bread, he immediately went out, and it was night. Simon Peter said to him, Lord, where are you going? Jesus answered, Where I am going, you cannot follow me now, but you will follow afterwards. Peter said to him, Lord, why can I not follow you now? I will lay down my life for you. Jesus answered, Will you lay down your life for me? Very truly, I tell you, before the cock crows, you will have denied me three times.
They went to a place called Gethsemane, and he said to his disciples, Sit here while I pray. He took with him Peter and James and John, and he began to be distressed and agitated. And he said to them, I am deeply grieved, even to death. Remain here and keep awake. And going a little farther, he threw himself on the ground and prayed that if it were possible, the hour might pass from him. He said, Abba, Father, for you all things are possible. Remove this cup from me, yet not what I want, but what you want. He came and found them sleeping, and he said to Peter, Simon, are you asleep? Could you not keep awake one hour? Keep awake and pray that you may not come into the time of trial. The spirit indeed is willing, but the flesh is weak. And again he went away and prayed, saying the same words. And once more he came and found them sleeping, for their eyes were very heavy, and they did not know what to say to him. He came a third time and said to them, Are you still sleeping and taking your rest? Enough! The hour has come. The Son of Man is betrayed into the hands of sinners. Get up. Let us be going. See, my betrayer is at hand. After Jesus had spoken these words, he went out with his disciples across the Kidron Valley to a place where there was a garden, which he and his disciples entered. Now Jesus, and now Judas, who betrayed him, also knew the place, because Jesus often met there with his disciples. So Judas brought a detachment of soldiers together with police from the chief priests and the Pharisees. And they came there with lanterns and torches and weapons. Then Jesus, knowing all that was to happen to him, came forward and asked of them, From whom are you looking? They answered, Jesus of Nazareth. Jesus replied, I am he. Judas, Judas, who had betrayed him, was standing with them. When Jesus said to them, I am he, they stepped back and fell to the ground. Again he asked them, From whom are you looking? And they said, Jesus of Nazareth. Jesus answered, I told you, that I am he. So if you are looking for me, let these men go. This was to fulfill the word that he had spoken. I did not lose a single one of those whom you gave me. Then Simon Peter, who had a sword, drew it and struck the high priest slave and cut off his right ear. The slave's name was Malchus. Jesus said to Peter, put your sword back into your sheath. Am I not to drink the cup that the Father has given me? So the soldiers, their officer, and the Jewish police arrested Jesus, and they bound him.
then called together the chief priests, the leaders, and the people, and said to them, You brought me this man as the one who was perverting the people. And here I have examined him in your presence and have not found this man guilty of any of your charges against him. Neither has Herod, for he sent him back to me. Indeed, he has done nothing to deserve death. I will have him flogged and release him. Then they all shouted out together, Away with this fellow! Release Barabbas to us! This was a man who had been put in prison for an insurrection that had taken place in the city and for murder. Pilate, wanting to release Jesus, addressed them again, but they kept shouting, Crucify him! Crucify him! A third time he said to them, Why, what evil has he done? I have found in him no ground for the sentence of death. I will therefore have him flogged and then release him. But they kept urgently demanding with loud shouts that he should be crucified, and their voices prevailed. So Pilate gave his verdict that their demands should be granted. As they led him away, they seized a man, Simon of Cyrene, who was coming from the country, and they laid the cross on him and made him carry it behind Jesus. A great number of the people followed him, and among them were women who were beating their breasts and wailing for him. But Jesus turned to them and said, Daughters of Jerusalem, do not weep for me, but weep for yourselves and for your children. For the days are surely coming when they will say, Blessed are the barren and the wombs that never bore and the breasts that never nursed. Then they will begin to say to the mountains, Fall on us and to the hills, cover us. For if they do this when the wood is green, what will happen when it is dry? Two others also, who were criminals, were led away to be put to death with him. When they came to the place that is called the skull, they crucified Jesus there with the criminals, one on his right and one on his left. Then Jesus said, Father, forgive them, for they do not know what they are doing. And they cast lots to divide his clothing, and the people stood by watching. But the leaders scoffed at him, saying, He saved others, let him save himself if he is the Messiah of God his chosen one. The soldiers also mocked him, coming up and offering him sour wine and saying, if you are the king of Jews, save yourself. There was also an inscription over him that is, this is the king of the Jews.
Meanwhile, standing near the cross of Jesus were his mother and his mother's sister, Mary, the wife of Clopas, and Mary Magdalene. When Jesus saw his mother and the disciple whom he loved standing beside her, he said to his mother, Woman, here is your son. Then he said to the disciple, Here is your mother. And from that hour, the disciple took her into his own home. After this, when Jesus knew that all was now finished, he said, in order to fulfill the scripture, I am thirsty. A jar full of sour wine was standing there, so they put a sponge full of the wine on a branch of hyssop and held it to his mouth. When Jesus had received the wine, he said, It is finished. Then he bowed his head and gave up his spirit. After these things, Joseph of Arimathea, who was a disciple of Jesus, though a secret one because of his fear of the Jews, asked Pilate to let him take away the body of Jesus. Pilate gave him permission. So he came and removed the body. Nicodemus, who had at first come to Jesus by night, also came, bringing a mixture of myrrh and aloes, weighing about a hundred pounds. They took the body of Jesus and wrapped it with the spices in linen cloths, according to the burial custom of the Jews. Now there was a garden in the place where he was crucified, and in the garden there was a new tomb 
in which no one had ever been laid. And so, because it was the Jewish day of preparation and the tomb was nearby, they laid Jesus there. Anticipating the resurrection of Mr. Khan. 